Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22. A few moments ago I just watched the Argentinian sprint race in MotoGP and my goodness that was fantastic. Absolutely belting race. I'm not going to spoil the results yet but I will do very soon so if you don't want to hear about the race and I advise for you to not watch this video any longer but for those that are still here you want to hear about a few things about the sprint race and as the title suggests Franco Morbidelli is back he's back at the sharp end of racing within MotoGP and Franco has looked really solid all weekend from the first free practice directly getting into Q2 being extremely competitive in Q2 was on provisional pole for a short amount of time it's looking good for Franco. I know this is a track he likes, and I know the Yamaha traditionally goes well here in Argentina, but there's a certain feel-good factor to Frankie at the moment, and I really hope that this is the start of him getting back to where he was, or a reformed and fresher Franco Morbidelli. I really hope so, because it must be difficult to have a lot of pressure being in the VR46 Academy, Seeing great riders like Marco Bezzecchi, Luca Marini moving up the field, Pecco Bagnaia becoming world champion. And then on the other side, you've got difficult times in the VR46 Academy. Andrea Migno not getting a ride this season. Nicolo Antonelli. Unfortunately, Nicolo Antonelli has been going backwards for quite a few years. And I imagine feelings and worries and pressures are getting to Franco Morbidelli or have been in the past that he could be going that same direction. So this, for me, is a great feel-good story. I'm all about picking the people up who are down. So when someone's down, they're kicking themselves. You know, you do say to yourself, maybe that's it for them and possibly they should move on to something new. And yes, we're all guilty of writing people off. I do it. Everyone does it. And in the past, I think Franco has been doubted. He has been written off. And to see him fighting here, I can just honestly say I hope it's the start of something new. Now on the theme of doubting and writing riders off, unfortunately I think the next one in the uh, the pundit's eye line is Joanne Mir on that Repsol Honda. He has not yet tamed the RC213V. Silky smooth on that Suzuki, but changing over to this beast of a Honda is... <laughs> that must be extremely difficult. We're seeing the difference in the likes of Alex Marquez. Removing himself from Honda, joining the best bike on the grid in the form of the Ducati. Change man. Pole position in just his second race, his first ever pole in MotoGP, and is looking pretty promising. I had to pick up Alex Marquez in my uh, my fantasy team to help with the MotoGP fantasy league, because I think it's helped at this stage. But I do hope that uh, in an ideal world, no one would struggle, and we'd all be very competitive. But... The main point of today's video was the fact that Franco Morbidelli is back. I hope it stays this way, but upon that note, I've got to focus on the commentary because I am yet to get past Joan Mir, and I honestly expected to have uh, dispatched with him by now, but he's still playing it quite well, so I'm going to keep an eye on the number 36, and hopefully we can get Franco Morbidelli the win here today in Argentina. But before I delve into the commentary, a few things to mention. One... How amazing was Brad Binder? That was absolutely unbelievable. 15th to 1st, 15th to 4th in the first lap. Yeah, easy business for the South African. How epic was Luca Marini and Marco Bezzecchi? Just a great battle. I honestly thought Bezzecchi was going to get his first victory. And I've got to say, I'm a big fan of Marco, so I was slightly biased and hoping that he would beat Brad Binder. But at the same time, I don't think... I would be disappointed with anyone winning today's race. It was just brilliant. I probably would say that the sprint race is one of the best racing we've seen in MotoGP. The first couple of laps, my goodness, yes, they are hectic. They are like Moto3 Grand Prix. Pretty wild, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, loving the sprint era, and I'm loving the competitive nature and riding that we've had this season. But now it's time to talk about my gameplay because right now we're in a bit of a dogfight with Joan Mir here. I honestly expected to have dispatched him with him by now, but he is not allowing me to break away. I was hoping I could just break away, get to the front, disappear, start churning out fast lap times, but yet again, Joan Mir has something else to say. 
and I lost a tenth to Juan Mir on this particular lap. So, two seconds away from Jack Miller. I guess it's down to us to have a bit of a ding-dong of a battle. And look at that name on the left-hand side there. Darren Binder in the top five. What a job for the number 40. I, I was playing this a few days ago, as a matter of fact. I, can't, I think it was Aragon. And Darren Binder took pole position or something very similar. Pretty crazy how the AI works sometimes in MotoGP 22. But yeah, if you've not noticed with the gameplay so far, I am only using power setting 1. Thought it would be more interesting and, of course, to be more challenging. If you've watched my MotoGP career mode videos, I'd do the same thing. Power setting 1 just makes life a little bit more inter interesting and entertaining for MotoGP 22. The AI is on the hardest difficulty, if you weren't aware. But now, I'm pretty strong into the right-hander here. I don't want to do a replication of what uh, ba Marco Bezzecchi did early, getting the Ducati weaving and turning and almost crashing into turn seven, so still on it. Darren Binder's now into the third position. He's now on a possible rostrum here. Third place for the South African. He's looking to almost do better than his big brother here today, <laughs> in real life, of course. What an effort. Davizioso's there in six as well, so the Yamaha's looking great which I can't really say is that the same thing in real life. At least not for Fabio Quattararo's side of the garage. He's certainly not enjoying the Argentina GP right now. So, quick change of direction to the left-hand side. Across the line, we have set a 135.867. Pretty competitive lap time with the first power option. Eco saving mode still gives us a chance to be competitive here in MotoGP 22. There's Joan Mir up on the inside. So once again, we've got to do the business. Now to the left-hand side, I'm quite strong here. Not strong enough to close in to the man on board, the Suzuki. Quick change of direction to the right here. A little bit tentative going into that part there because there's a small bump that can really cause you to crash. And of course, here is where we're going to lose a massive amount of speed and time to the Suzuki ahead. Thank goodness that's not a Ducati. We'd never see him again. So on the firm part of the tyre as we break into turn five, Juan Mir a little bit deep. I like to go for the tight apex as we make a bit of contact there. Gesticulation from both riders as Darren Binder has unfortunately slipped off of the podium. He's down there into fourth. As Jack Miller and his final season Ducati is still there in third. But now breaking into the right hand of turn seven. Juan Mir pushes us in deep. He has now taken over on the penultimate lap of this Argentina Grand Prix. I'm on the wrong side. I don't like to be on the right there. I like to be on the left. So I can go for that overtake lunge, but the change of direction, that's where it's key. Yamaha ahead of the Suzuki. Yamaha in the hands of Franco's looking pretty solid. Cast your minds back to 2020. It's like these two are just at it again. Hit the, the old time uh, warp or time switch and gone back in time for these two to duke it out again. So good stuff. Exiting the final... Oh, <laughs> goodness me, exiting the final sector of the penultimate lap gave us a wonderful moment there between Juan Mir, but I'm going to try and go on the inside. Oh, that's late. I gave it everything going into the first corner. Actually, I outbreak myself a little bit. Binder's back on the podium, or at least he was, as we'll now have to try and outbreak Juan Mir to the left-hand side. I've gone too wide here. Juan Mir's going to go a bit too wide. He's gone down. Oh, who would have thought that was coming? Juan Mir, out of it. Well, I guess that's it then. I can finally have my moment of peace where I can start talking to you. I mean, it's come late. Very late, as a matter of fact. But Darren Binder... Oh, he's up into second now! <laughs> oh, it's brilliant! He's second, he's third, he's... Is he still there in second? He is. He's down to third, he's back up to second. We're going to get a South African podium in the side of uh, Darren Binder rather than Brad Binder. He was so good. In real life was Brad. But here in the video game form, Darren Binder up into the top three. Pekka Banya is now risen to second, so the cream rising to the top. But with 2.4 seconds clear, we've got this one done. I do hope you've enjoyed my little chat today about Franco Morbidelli. I very much enjoyed making this video. It was a nice battle with Joanne Mir whilst it lasted. And seeing Darren Bin Oh, are you joking? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, that's a damn shame. I was rather hoping we could have a novelty factor on the uh, podium there for old time's sake. But we are going to be victorious here in Argentina. If Franco Morbidelli can replicate this, but in the full race, then I'll be a happy man. But for now, guys, I will leave you with a final question. Is Franco Morbidelli back to being 100% and back at the sharp end of racing? Or is it merely 
a flash in the pan. Let me know in the comments section down below, guys. Be sure to like the video and consider subscribing as well, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.